Yo, Crawl here. The last time I talked about ESLint or a linter and how to set it up, I said I would do that in a separate video, which is one, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I should stop talking so fast. And to actually see if you make any mistakes, if you make any syntax errors in your code, if you break any rules you're gonna set up for your own. So we're gonna do that right now. And how we're gonna do that, let's dive in. So you can still see I have all my shit here. So I'm just gonna clear this out right quick. Uh, what you need is ESLint, first of all. This is going to be super important. So we do npm i ESLint. We're going to do dash uppercase D. You can also do double dash save def, but this is the same as D uppercase, uh, dash uppercase D. So we're going to do that. We're going to install that. We wait for a second until it installs. It will update our package log JSON. It will add an entry into our package JSON. Uh, you can see it right about here. Dev dependencies are essential for stuff you don't want to ship or install on a production ready environment, which means when you deploy your bot, you don't need ESLint. You need ESLint for developing. That's why they are called dev dependencies, because they're developer dependencies or development dependencies. So to go about that is if I would open my JS file right now, I got an error message, which practically says there is no ESLint configuration found. So before we get that error message though, it's important that you install ESLint. There is a plugin on that for VS Code. It's called ESLint. It's by Dirk Burma. Uh, you just install it. You don't need to do any additional uh, setup after that. For Atom, there is one too. Uh, I'm not going to cover that though. You will find it. There is there is there is an article about that on an idiot's guide. I'm gonna link that in my description below. And he uses Adam and he knows how to set that up. Just just check that out if you need it. And after you have that, you probably need to restart your VS Code or your your editor of choice. You need to create a file. There's two ways to do that. We're gonna do the easy way first. Um, which is called dot eslint rc json. This already has the nice icon here. So um, what we're going to do here is we need a structure like this, right? Obviously, because it's it's JSON uh, object, or it's JSON file. And what we do is first of all we do extends, and in that we do eslint colon uh, recommended. I think it was yeah. The second thing we need is the environment which is node, obviously, and we use ES6. So we set those two values to true. But I always forget because I usually use a JS file for that. We need to put them like this. And you see, it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we don't need to put that there. Uh, the next thing we need to set is the parser options. The parser options are like ECMA version. We don't use five. We use 2017 because we use future JavaScript because we can do that with Node 8. Uh, the source type uh, will be for modules. And ECMA features is for special features that you might want to use. You might not want to use them, but I use them. You don't have to use them. You maybe should not use them if you don't know what they're doing, but I'm, I'm still going to explain how to put them and it's uh, experimental object rest spread it, it says right there it's like super 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 experimental right and you just set that to true so after that we're practically already set we can do rules and this is this is where the important part comes in because this is where you define your rules so what are rules okay very easily explained The rule that comes to mind is, I think it's semi. And if I put in semi, and I put in like error, so this is it's this is this is safe now, and I can practically just leave it, clear this out, go into my file here, and it will not error anymore, right? It will just be up and running. So I click on the the problems tab here, and then it will already tell me unexpected console statement, no console. And this is what ESLint basically does. It tells me like how to 
structure my code and be consistent with it. This is an issue though, because a lot of people do console logs, right? So how do I get around that? Well, there's there's two things you can do. I do you do you, you comment behind it and so like Island disable line. This is super easy, you don't need to do anything else then. But you can also do you disable line no console. This will just disable no console. If I have any other error in this line, it will still show up. So if I remove the semicolon now, because you know I have semi on error, so if I don't have semicolons, it will error on me and will tell me missing semicolon. If I remove that obviously here, the no console part, it will just remove all rows. I can I can also do no console and then I can do semi. So I have like two rows disabled, but if I had a third error in there, it would still like tell me this isn't this is not working. Like for example right this, right? You can see it's a parsing error unexpected uh what do you call it? Parenthesis, right? And then it expects like a semicolon because like everything is just wonky, right? It's just not, not in the place. It should not be there. Um, so this is one way. The other way is if you don't want to do this for every line because you're going to have a lot of console statements, probably, maybe you should not, but you probably will. Uh, you can you can go into the rules because the, the, the same I, the, the no console thing that comes actually with the ESL recommended rules. So what you can do is, um, no console and set it to I can type set it to off. And what this does is it deactivates the rule and you can use console statements. And this is how you want to structure it, right? And this is just, just when it like you want to add rules and rules and rules and rules. And and where you, where you find the rules is actually super easy. Because you just go to was it the screen? Yeah. You just go to eslint.org and then go to the user guides. And you can see configuring ESLint and it already like it says a bunch of stuff there. It's like super, super not important actually. I mean, some of it might be important if you really want to look into it. Like here, for example, right? You can see like you can set jQuery global variables so that it doesn't error on them. But this is not what we want. We want to go to the rules, yeah, to the rules right here. And then you can see like, this is all the rules it has. And if you're unsure about what a, what a certain rule does, um, you can, you can, for example, go like semi, right? There's like 10 of them, but this is the one we defined. So if you click on it and then look at it and be like, oh, okay, I see. Require or disallow semicolons instead of ASI. So what this does is basically if you scroll down and set it to always which is basically error right you can error and always so you will always require them if you just do like error because it always is a default value so if you just put it to error and you forget a semicolon right here it will it will always error on you until you put that fucking semicolon there i'm sorry for the f word <laughs> fucking f oh, i said it again ah oh, those f bombs i tell you um and yeah like if you if you put it that's fine but if you don't put it, it will error you. But the most important thing why I think a linter is very important because a lot of people when they start out, they, they don't know how to set braces. So when they do like client, switch view, client on message, right? And then I shouldn't, I shouldn't make my own message handler right here. I'm sorry. Uh, they do, they do if, and they do this, but somehow, because I don't know what editor to use, but you see like every time I open one, it closes one. So if they, and if I delete the first one, it deletes the second one, right? But somehow people manage to do like stuff like, I can't even do it. Somehow manage people, people manage to do that. And then they do it like that. And then they come into our server and be like, guys, why is this code arrowing? And I'm like, well, there's a brace like this, this you know, there's a, the, the, the code, like even if, you, if I execute it right now, it will tell me unexpected token, right? Right here. Like, what does that mean? Right? I mean, what does it really mean? It means like, this is too much. I mean, you can even see it on the indentation. Like, where would this go? Like, where would this go? Why is it like it's closing up there? It shouldn't close up there. So what some people do then is like, they do this. And then it's still not working. And they're like, why is this not working? I just closed it, right? Yeah, I mean, yes, you did, but look where you closed it and look where this thing is. Like this thing does nothing. And it, you, like, you get a red line under it, right? So all you have to do is like delete that. Boom, right? Obviously this error 
is not correct because this is because I don't have a statement in there or anything. Like I would have to put something in there. But you can see, like, it's already triggering a lot of things. Like, AS, ASSAD is not defined. Empty block statement because I have nothing in there. So I need, we need to put something in there. Now I don't. Now, I, now two things aren't defined. My semicolon is not set, so I need to set my semicolon. I'm like, okay, this is still not defined. So we need to go up here and be like const equals string. But now this thing isn't defined, so I need to like const equals other string. And now I re now all of my errors are gone. So now I could practically just start it up. But then incorrect login details were provided because I was like changing a token obviously, right? But apart from that, you cannot like you will see your issues way easier. And this is this is why an ESLint file is important. To quickly go over the other topic because I said you can do it a different way. Well how to do it differently? Well it's very easy, but I wouldn't recommend it. So this is like for people who who just want to start out, use this. For people who want to go a bit more advanced, you can you can com basically completely delete your ESLint JSON file right? and, and just scratch it off the surface. And you can install packages from, from people who made their own ESLint configurations available online, which is, for example, something I did. So you install ESLint like usual, and then you install ESLint config aqua, and then always like dash D because it's a dev dependency. This is basically my ESLint package that's out there with predefined rules for browsers and for uh, Node. So you can see it's right in there. And what you have to do is in your package JSON, you can have ESLint config and then do extends aqua. So what this basically does is it ESLint reads the package JSON file, goes to the ESLint config, extends aqua, and this is practically the same thing as an ESLint.json. Because I can also put in rules here and override my own rules. So I for example have a rule, have a rule that's I can show you that. The console rule, right? You see, it's already triggering, right? I don't even have an ESLint file anymore, but it's already triggering because I installed a package that has an ESLint configuration in it. And ESLint is parsing that with the ESLint config in the package JSON. And I have a rule here, which is the no console rule, and I can disable that in my package JSON. So I can do no console. I don't get autocomplete in here, so that's that's a bit more. Right? You need to know what you're doing. So I can I can set it to I cannot set it. Yeah, I can set it to off. I could also like you could also use values, right? You can also use like zero, and then it's gone. I've overwritten that one rule in my ESLint config in the package JSON, and that's all about it. Like this is how you install ESLint. I hope this will help you out on your way to be a programmer or <laughs> help you out by programming your Discord bot. I see you later.